Hi, this is Tanya from My Vinyl Cut. I'm going to show you how to use a couple different monograms. This is the circle monogram purchased from the Font Brothers. It's made by Harold's Fonts. And this is also um, from Font Brothers. It's the Vine monogram font. Um, these are the two finished products. If you want to learn how to use these and touch on some other different styles of monograms, um, stay tuned. So, in order to achieve this circle monogram, you have to purchase and download the font. So I have, and I'm going to type here, A, B, C. So these are all lowercase. Um, I'm going to turn them black so you can, oh, that's the line. I'm going to turn them black so you can see them. And I'm going to go to my text style panel. And up here I'm going to type in circle. Um, monograms and there are four different styles here so there is the three black the two black three white and two white so if you notice when I change them you can't read them because um, the lowercase le letters are all the left letters so I'm going to double click to get it into text um, mode and I'm going to backspace. So I actually want the white version. So um, let's click off of it and then change it to the second one. Um, so I'm going to type in the lowercase a, which is the left letter. And if I type in the lowercase b, it just types it right over there on top of the A, you can't even see it. What you have to do is hit Shift and B to type a literal uppercase B, and that will give you the center letter. So no matter what letter you type, if it's an uppercase, it'll be in the center um, format. And then if I type the lowercase C, I type it, and it just stays on the left-hand side on top of the A, and you can't even really see it so I'm going to delete that um, in order to, re to and if I type in the uppercase C you can't even see it because it types it right over top of this so I'm going to delete that you can't even see that I was doing it but when you purchase a font like this that's a true type font or an open type font that's literally installed into your program and you type it it usually comes with instructions, like a README file. And this is what came with the circle monogram when you purchase it. So these are the different styles. This is three letters in white. This is two letters in white. This is three letters in black. This is two letters in black. It also comes with some frames you can type. So um, in order to get the three letters the way you want it, you type the lowercase for the left, the uppercase for the center, and then the right letter is right here. It says it's a bit harder, you use the chart. So if you want the C, you have to type in the number 3. So I go back to my silhouette program, I type in the number 3, and there's my C. Now, how do I get those frames? Go back to your document, the PDF document they sent you. Oops, for some reason, I'm to show... Okay, here we go. Um, right here in red, it says type the key for the frame before the monogram letters. So if you want the double frame, you type in this key and so on. So I want just, this is the one I'm using right here, the three white monogram. So I want just this solid one. So that is the question mark sign. Now if I go back to silhouette and type in a question mark, it puts it way over here to the right. So it said to type it before. So I'm going to arrow left, left, left. You can see right here a flashing cursor. I'm in front of it and I type, I um, hit shift, question mark, and there is my circle. Now it's got this red squiggle because it lets you know it's still in text mode and that's not a word. So it's my spell check letting me know to check the spelling. Um, if you don't want it in text mode, um, all you have to do is click on it, object, convert to path, and it's now a path. It's no longer text typable. So that's that one. This one 
is pretty much the same. Um, it's not, I already converted, I already welded it because you want to weld this. You don't need to weld this because there's no overlapping, but these overlap and if you don't weld it, your cuts will go right through the letters. You don't want that. So um, I will show you how to get this one. This one is called the Vine Monogram. And it's pretty much the same thing, A, B, C. I'm going to make it larger so you can see. And I'm going to turn it red. I'm going to turn the line off. And then I'm going to go to the textile panel and type in line. Now this one, the reason I wanted to show it to you, I mean, it's, it's pretty much the same way. You type it out use the chart that they send, but this one's set up a little bit differently. Do you remember I was able to um, scroll down and, and see the different styles? They have theirs in a different place. So this is um, the first one. It looks like the only one, but it isn't. If you go down here, this is where they have all the different ones. So they, this one's inline, this one's open, this one's open, solid, um, bold, this one's solid, and this one's solid bold, which I believe is the most common. So I'm going to go back. So these are three lower cases. So you want to go um, lowercase, uppercase, and then there's lowercase. Now this one, it let, you don't have to type a number, it, lets you, it knows, I don't know how, I mean, these people are geniuses in my eyes, I don't know how it knows, but it knows, so that's how you do it there. Um, and I can't remember, I didn't pull up my chart, so I can't remember what um, their chart is, but let's just type in numbers. Nope, it's not a one, it's not that, it's not that. So I don't know, there's, there's one of them. So that I just typed in a question mark, but see it's the same way where it does it on the right. So you have to arrow all the way over to the left. See my blinking cursor here, my cursor's here. You can type the question mark and there you go, there's a frame for it. So um, if, if, I don't know, you need to pull up the chart. It's probably the greater sign, less than sign. So when I go to cut, um, you will see, let's zoom in, the cut lines are through the overlapping letters. So what you want to do is convert it. Let's see if I can just convert it to a path. Object, convert to path, and then we'll go to cut. Oh, no, that didn't do it. So it's an overlapping path. So you do need to weld it. So you go to, you click it, object, modify, weld, and then you want to group it. Right. It's not working because we can get it to a path. So I'm going to object, release the compound path. <laughs> I think I totally messed it up. Um, modify, weld, it's going to weld one big shape. So let's delete that and do it all over again. So, yeah, you want to weld it. That's just how the silhouette program goes. A, B, C. And before we do that, I'm going to type in a question mark. So see, this is what it looks like in uh, regular alphabet terms. I'm just going to um, turn the line off. And you can't even see it at all. I'm going to turn it to red. And then enlarge it. And then I'm going to go to the textile panel. And then select line. And then I'm going to go here to select the solid bulb. I'm sorry. And then solid bulb. Okay, so now we're going to go to object, modify, weld. It welded it. And then, okay. hopefully, we will work right now. So we'll go to send. Yeah, we'll zoom in, and it's been welded. So it'll cut real nice. It even prints nice too. Sometimes when you, even if you're just printing and um, on a sublimation, 
transfer, when you put it on your shirt, you can still see the cut lines. Even if you're just printing invitations or you're printing on vinyl, no matter what you print on, sometimes that shows up. So you always want to weld your, your cursive letters, anything that overlaps, um, no matter what. And um, you also want to, um, if you type it out and it's supposed to be a cursive font and it's supposed to be touching, like it's written in cursive, you want to scoot, you want to ungroup it and scoot them together so they touch right and line it up nice and then weld it um, so it looks professional. That's the way the, the font creator intended for it to look. Um, now there's another way to do monograms. Um, I've opened up this document, so I can't remember where I got this. But, you know, some people buy these or sell these. They're um, they're not they're monograms because they're the initials in the monogram format, but they're not fonts. Um, some they sometimes they're called fonts, but they're also called SVG fonts or just SVG letters, and that's what these are. These probably were a font typed out and then converted to a path and just now they're little SVGs. So you, if you want to make, if you get one of these and you don't know how to use it, um, they're probably all grouped together like this. You want to ungroup it and it might even just, yep, see it, it still keeps these grouped and you probably even want to ungroup these. So say we were going to do the letters A, E, and then C. Uh, you know, you're like, now what do I do with it? Um, luckily, there are some tools you can use. You can either align it quickly up here um, so it's at least lined up right. Um, sometimes, you know, they're a little bit further apart. Well, I should, shouldn't have done that with my, my finger. I should have used the arrows. Um, but okay, so let's align it up again, and then here in this one, there's a few more options. You can center it evenly, but I mean, gosh, that's not really what you want. That's too far apart. So you can actually use your tools here. Look at the B right in the center, and then with your arrow, like if you arrow over, I know it's going to take forever. You can hit your shift and then arrow a little bit faster in larger increments. Um, and that way you, it won't get out of alignment. And even if you have trouble, you can, with your circle tool here, you can hit shift and make a circle, and it'll be a perfect circle, rather than just hitting that, selecting the ellipse and then making one, you, you hit shift and do it, and it makes it a circle. So even if you want to help yourself by lining it up that way, you can, or you can make your own frame, like this didn't come with frames, you can make your own frame but um, that's how you use an SVG type monogram font. Um, so I hope this helps everybody. Um, let's, let's actually see if we can make another one of these. So I'm going to copy and paste and I'm going to actually extend it out a little bit and then I'm going to go like this. Um, actually, uh, let's group this together. So that's grouped. And then we're going to take all three and see if this works. We're going to center it here and center it here. And then you select just the top two lines to select both the circles. And you want to make it a path. And then you can fill it in. Oops. No. Let's undo. I don't think convert to path. Convert to path usually only means... Um, with text on a on a path. Object make compound path. And then here, yeah, so there you go. And that was a little thin. Um, you can make it thinner. You can even redo it so that was pretty easy. Or you can make an offset tool. Offset it. Apply. You kind of offset it on it offset it on both sides so it went not only further out, it went further in. So um, I would just redo that, but um, that's how you make a couple different types of monograms. So I hope this helped. Um, I, I'm not 
on YouTube a whole lot making videos, but if I see people asking a lot of the same questions, I'll make a video to help you out.